there is absolutely no doubt that Sim 7600G 4G LTE module stands out as the superior and most advanced among all GSMG Paris modules. Its exceptional capability to be fully compatible with not just 4G networks, but also with the older 3G and 2G networks, sets it apart in the field of mobile communication technology. This versatility ensures seamless connectivity regardless of the network generation. Moreover, the GN Sim 7600G is indicative of its global compatibility, signifying that this module is not restricted by geographical boundaries. This global functionality allows for its use in virtually any part of the world, offering unparalleled convenience and reliability to users who require consistent communication capabilities across different countries and regions. This feature is particularly beneficial for international travelers and businesses operating on a global scale, making the SIM 7600G an indispensable tool in the modern interconnected world. I've already explained its technical specifications, onboard components, spin out, interfacing, and how to send and receive text messages. During the practical demonstration, I controlled 110 or 220 volt AC bulbs through simple text commands, and each time I would turn on or turn off a load, the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module will also send me a feedback message, obviously with the help of SIM 7600G module. Not only this, I also monitored the MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor. I would simply send a request message and then the controller would replay with a temperature value. So if you're just getting started with the SIM 7600G 4G LTE module, then I highly recommend you should watch my previous video on the SIM 7600G GSM module. Previously, I had to do a lot of wiring and as you can see, the wiring is very congested and confusing. In this kind of wiring, there is a high risk of damaging the components and I don't want the SIM 7600G to get damaged due to any of my mistakes. Since I have to use the SIM 7600G GSM module in many projects, I can't do this much wiring every time. So, I decided to design my own ESP32 based development board for the SIM 7600G so that I can easily use it in basic, intermediate and advanced level projects. So here is my ESP32 based development board PCB designed in Ultium Designer where I have added a 543 amps power supply, headers for the SIM 7600G module and a relay. After designing the PCB and generating the Gerbo files, I use the Next PCB Free Online PCB Gerbo Viewer and DFM tool HQDFM. I simply dragged and dropped the Gerbo files. It quickly analyzed all the files. Next, I opened the desired layers. For this, you can also use the Open All button. Anyway, I closely checked the top and bottom sides. On the right side, I could also see the DFM checklist, which detected DFM problems. I fixed all the related issues and since Next PCB offers PCBs at quite reasonable prices, I ordered 5 PCBs along with a stencil. Only $62 for the 5 PCBs, a stencil and also includes shipping. This is simply amazing. I will add links in the description if you want to try their Gerbo Viva and order high quality PCBs. After a few days, I got this from the Next PCB so let's go ahead and open up this box. I got 5 high quality PCBs and I'm really thankful to Next PCB for sending this PCB ruler. I'm really impressed with their PCB's quality. The traces are clean and precise and the sill screen is clear and easy to read. It's impressive how well they have managed to capture the detailed design. This is the SMT stencil for applying solar paste onto the PCB. It's made from a durable material ensuring it will last through multiple uses. And I have purchased all these SMD components from AliExpress and Amazon. You can download the BOM file from our website electronicclinic.com. In the same file, you will also find the PCB design and the circuit diagram. I have already made a quite detailed video on SMD soldering. In that video, I have explained everything from the tools, how to place components on PCBs and how to use an SMD rework station to solder those components. After watching that video, you will become an expert in SMD soldering. Without the ended traditional microscope and non-magnetic ESD tweezers, 
it would have been so difficult for me to place these tiny SMD components on the PCB. By the way, you can watch my videos on NS traditional microscope and non-magnetic HST tweezers. All the components have been placed onto the PCB and next we will start soldering. I'm going to use the Kata SMD Rework Station 2018D+. I'm going to set the airflow speed to 1 as I don't want my SMD components to fly away. And I'm going to set the temperature between 350 and 400 degrees Celsius. All the SMD components have been soldered and next I'm going to solder the through hole components. We are done with the soldering of all the SMD and through hole components and it looks good. Anyway, before I connect a power supply, first I want to check and confirm that there is no short circuit. So guys, our ESP32 development board is ready. These are the female headers for the SM7600 G4G LTE module. These are the female headers for connecting sensors and output devices. This is a 5 volt relay for controlling high voltage AC and DC loads. This is completely isolated from the rest of the components because I'm using an optocoupler to control this relay. This diode provides protection against the big EMF. These contacts are clearly labeled over here. We connect a 12 volt power supply. This is the 12 volt N and this is the ground. The next three contacts are 5 volt, 3.3 volt and ground. You can use these to power up 5 volt and 3.3 volt sensors and breakout boards. The next two contacts are for connecting serial supported devices like ultrasonic sensor, displays and other sensors and breakout boards that support serial communication. Again, we have 5 volt and ground. Finally, these three contacts are connected to the relay normally open, common and normally closed contacts. What makes this ESP32 development board super special is this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. We are going to use this power supply to power up the SM7600G ESP32 and all the other components. If you plan to use this board at home or in a location where Wi-Fi is available, then you can operate it without the SM7600G GSM module. However, if you want to use it in a random location where there is no Wi-Fi network, then you can plug in the SM7600 G 4G LTE module to provide an internet connection to the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. And if you don't want to use either the Wi-Fi or SM7600 G, then you can use the ESP32's onboard Bluetooth module. Anyway, if you also want to make this ESP32 development board, then you can download its Gerber files from our website electronicplanet.com. Send those Gerber files to next PCB and order yourself some high quality PCBs. Let's go ahead and plug in the SM7600 G4G LTE module and control this relay through text messages. You will need to download this program from a website electronicclinic.com. This is the same exact program I used in the SM7600 G getting started video. This time I removed the temperature sensor code and I decreased the number of relays to one. I've already uploaded this program and now let's watch the new ESP32 development board and SIM 7600G 4G LTE module in action. I have powered up the circuit using a 12 volt power supply. For the practical demonstration, I have connected a 220 volt AC bulb. Remember safety first. When the 110 or 220 volt AC supply is connected, never touch the relay contacts as it can be extremely dangerous. It is important to note that when working with mains voltage, proper safety precautions should always be taken and it is advisable to consult relevant electrical codes and standards. Let's send a command to turn on the bulb. Amazing, the bulb just turned on and now it will send a feedback message. Great, let's turn this bulb off. Next, I will use this with Blink application, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss that video. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.